So I think we can all agree that Slaughter Spines are probably the toughest machines in Forbidden West. Between their powerful melee attacks, super annoying plasma attacks, and massive health pool, they're a real challenge even for the best players. You rarely need to fight Slaughter Spines during quests, so it's relatively easy to avoid them. But to upgrade your outfits and weapons, especially legendary items, you're going to need a lot of Slaughter Spine components, like circulators, primary nerves, and apex hearts. And now, with New Game Plus bringing 8 new legendary weapons, we need to hunt even more Slaughter Spines to get all of our upgrades done. So in this video, we're going to learn effective tactics for taking down Slaughter Spines. I'll be playing on Very Hard, and we'll cover both the regular and Apex variants. And to prove the effectiveness, I'll just be using Purple Rarity gear, so don't worry if you don't have maxed out legendaries yet. That being said, I'll also show you some high level strategies for fast and efficient farming, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video for that. Now we've got a lot to cover, so let's go. Okay, so the most challenging thing about Slaughter Spines is managing their powerful attacks. Even though they're massive, they're still quite fast, so you'll often find yourself much closer than you'd like to be and susceptible to its melee attacks. If you can manage to keep your distance, then you'll be rewarded with an onslaught of plasma attacks including ground bursts, laser beams from both the tail and mouth, and plasma tracking orbs that launch from the spine launchers, just to name a few. Dodging all of these attacks can be really challenging, and on higher difficulty levels, it seems like if you make even one mistake, you're toast. So, my strategy is to minimize the number of attacks we have to deal with. To do that, we're going to keep the slaughter spine immobilized as much as possible. There are two tools that are particularly good for this, a rope caster and drill spikes, which we'll use both of at different points during the fight. The rope caster is the obvious one. If you aren't already using a rope caster in your loadout, specifically the elite rope caster from Thornmarsh, then I highly recommend you pick it up and upgrade it as soon as possible. However, remember that rope casters work a little differently than in Zero Dawn. Just tapping R2 to fire ropes won't work very well because they'll be blocked by armor plates. To use the rope caster effectively, you need to hold down R2 at least a little bit to draw and charge up your shot. A heavy weight like the slaughter spine is going to require three partially drawn or two overdrawn advanced binding ropes to tie it down. This is our very first step in our slaughter spine strategy. Tie it down with the elite rope caster. With the slaughter spine tied down, we're now going to take advantage of its weakness to frost and freeze it into the brittle state. This will double any damage we do, which will help us bring down the slaughter spine's massive health pool. Now, it's a little counterintuitive, but you actually don't want to target any weak points or even unarmored areas when freezing it. In fact, you want to target a big armor plate like this one on the slaughter spine's thigh. That's because dealing any significant amount of damage will degrade the tie down state quickly. By hitting an armor plate, we can reduce the elemental impact damage dealt by our frost arrows, but our elemental buildup is unaffected. With a couple volleys of triple notched advanced frost arrows, we'll be able to freeze the slaughter spine while keeping it tied down. Now, what's really nice about this approach is you don't need to rush once you have the slaughter spine frozen. The brittle state lasts for 25 seconds, and the tie down lasts for a total of 90, so we have plenty of time to reload weapons, heal, reposition, or do anything else you might need to do in the middle of a fight. In this case, we're going to take advantage of our time window to maximize our damage output to the frozen slaughter spine. I've done some testing, and I've determined that the plasma core, which is this small dome on the Slaughter Spine's chest has the highest damage multiplier of all its weak points, clocking in at 2.5. That multiplier, combined with our 2 times brittle multiplier, will let us absolutely melt the Slaughter Spine's HP. Now, keep in mind that the Plasma Core is initially covered by the Plasma Earth Blaster, so we need to remove that first. And be careful not to confuse the Plasma Core with the larger Plasma Energizer that's further up the Slaughter Spine's chest. You won't deal as much damage hitting this, so you'll want to make sure you're focusing on the small core. The best way to get an angle on it is to stand off to the side of the Slaughter Spine so you can fire between its arms and legs. Okay, so which weapon are we going to use to deal damage? Well, we have some different options depending on your playstyle. Personally, my preference is to use advanced bolts on a bolt blaster, specifically while using the sustained burst weapon technique and the range master valor surge. In my opinion, the bolt blaster offers the best balance of enough precision to actually target the plasma core, but also a high enough fire rate and spread that we don't have to be super accurate. Plus, bolt blaster ammo is relatively cheap. I'll discuss some other options for dealing damage after the live demo, but I feel the bolt blaster is the best choice for most people. Remember you can trigger concentration while using the bolt blaster to make it easier to aim at the plasma core. Alright, so we have our strategy. Tie it down, freeze it, trigger the Valor Surge, and then focus our sustained bursts on that Earth Blaster and Plasma Core. But unless you're playing on a lower difficulty level or have the absolute best gear, you're not going to take the Slaughter Spine down with just one round of this. At this point, you're going to have a pretty angry Slaughter Spine on your hands, so we need to have a plan for what to do from here. This is where the Drill Spikes come in. If you've watched my Slitherfang hunting guide, then you know I like using Drill Spikes to trigger knockdowns, which stun large machines for 12 seconds. Similar to tying machines down with a Rope Caster, knockdowns make it easy to target components, reload weapons, heal, or do anything else you might need to do. For the Slaughter Spine, the knockdown prevents it from getting a chance to do many attacks and also allows us to easily tie it down again. It's important to hit machines in the legs when trying to trigger a knockdown, because the legs are the only zone on the body that will allow knockdowns to be triggered normally. The knockdown shot weapon technique for hunter bows is an exception and can be used on any part of the body. By the way guys, if you enjoy these 
these deep dive machine hunting guides, let me know by leaving a like on this video. My channel is actually a lot smaller than many people realize and leaving a like really does help. Okay, so as soon as you're done with your first sustained burst, you immediately want to land a few drill spikes on the slaughter spine's legs and the knockdown will be triggered after a few seconds. Then you should immediately tie it down again and repeat our steps from before. Remember to hit an armor plate with your frost arrows. Also, you might not have enough valor at this point to trigger the ranged master valor surge again, but that's okay. Just use your sustained burst on the plasma core anyway. If all goes well, this second round of damage will be enough to take down the slaughter spine, but don't be surprised if it takes you more than two rounds the first few times. It does take some practice to get the whole sequence down. Remember the steps are tie down and freeze, sustain burst to the plasma core, drill spike knockdown, and repeat. Now this strategy is very effective and fast once you get it down, but I'd be lying if I said you won't need to deal with any attacks, especially while you're still practicing to get this strategy down. So let's quickly cover how to deal with all these attacks. As with any machine, dodging the attacks will take some practice to learn the slaughter spine's patterns and tells. For example, it assumes a certain pose when it's about to fire the tracking orb, so as soon as I see that, I stop whatever I'm doing and start running sideways to avoid them. This attack, and almost all the others, are best avoided by using a slide dodge combination. Instead of just doing a simple dodge by hitting circle, you can avoid damage much more effectively by first sliding and then dodging at the end of the slide. This combination maximizes the distance you can cover and the invincibility frames you get. To slide, you need to first be running and then hit square. Just remember to either hit square again or jump to come out of the crouch at the end. I also recommend turning on the auto sprint setting so you can trigger a slide more easily. If you can train yourself to slide to avoid attacks instead of doing a regular dodge, you'll find it much easier to avoid taking damage. So in the demo, you'll see me slide dodge to avoid any melee or plasma attacks. The exceptions are the plasma laser swipe, which is best avoided with a normal dodge directly through it, and the plasma ground eruptions, which are best avoided by simply running away from them. Pro tip, you can actually force those plasma eruptions to end by running into shallow water. Water will also remove the plasma state from melee if you happen to get blasted with it, but you have to get into deep enough water for Aloy to start swimming, which can be a bit dicey when the slaughter spine is on your heels. It's a neat trick, but I think simply using a cleansing potion is the better option. Finally, the tracking plasma orb attack can be avoided with a slide dodge as well, but you first need to run to one slide until the last moment. If you try to dodge too soon, you'll almost certainly get hit. Okay, let's quickly go over all the gear I'm going to use, and then we'll check out the live demo. For my outfit, I'm using the fully upgraded Tanakh Reaver for its plasma resistance. I threw on a couple of melee defense weaves, but a more optimal setup here would be to use the Concentration Regen weave from the Nora Sentinel and the Concentration Plus weave from the Karja Shadow. My frost bow is a level 4 Seeker Hunter bow with two 15% frost coils on it. Then I have the fully upgraded Elite Rope Caster with a couple of 15% draw speed coils. For the Bolt Blaster, we have the Relentless at level 4 with a couple of impact damage coils. Close range damage coils would be better, but remember, I'm trying to show this is possible with lower level gear. And finally, we have the Spine Thorn Spike Thrower for our drill spikes with a couple of 10% knockdown power coils. Okay, let's check out the live combat. All right, guys, so we're here on the coastal slaughter spine site, the one on the mainland, and I'll show you my difficulties on very hard. Aim assist is on default. And I'll also show you that my outfit really is the Tanakh Reaver. You know, with transmog now, I could just like apply the look, but it really is equipped, so I'm really using that. Um, I'm going to preload three advanced frost arrows. Also going to scan the slaughter spine so we can highlight the earth blaster and the plasma core so we can see those a little easier. Now, when I go for the ropes, that's our first step. You're going to see me slide and draw. And that's because you can actually draw your weapon faster while sliding. That's intended functionality. It's not a bug. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a combat tips video soon, but just so you know what I'm doing there. Okay, so I'm going to slide in here, get the first rope off, slide again for the second rope. So he's tied down now, so we're ready to start freezing him. And remember, we're going for an armor plate so that we don't degrade the tie down state. I'm going to triple notch some more arrows here. Take one more. There we go. Now we have plenty of time here. So I'm going to trigger my Valor Surge. And this is maybe the trickiest part, is like kind of waiting for his animation here to reveal the Earth Blaster. So I didn't time it perfectly there, but we're still getting some good shots on it. And we should be able to get it torn off. So now I'm immediately going to go to Drill Spikes. You can see we got about half of his health there. Remember, we want the Drill Spikes in the leg. And after a couple seconds here, he should get knocked down. There we go. So I'm going to rope him again. You can rope him straight from the knockdown state into the tie down state. Oop, missed that one. There we go. 
So now we have plenty of time here. We have a full 90 seconds to reload our frost arrow, triple notch, and make sure our bolt blaster is good to go. Now I'm not going to have any valor for this next round, but that's okay. We should be fine because now we have the plasma core explode, exposed, um, so we can do lots of damage. We don't have the earth blaster in the way anymore. Okay, so I'm going to get positioned here and we'll target that plasma core. And there you go. It's almost too easy. As you guys can see, the Bolt Blaster Sustained Burst stacked with targeting that Plasma Core, the Range Master Valor Sorge, and the Brittle State really lets us knock down the Slaughter Spine's health quickly. Knocking it down with those Drill Spikes also helps keep it immobilized and makes it easy to tie it down the second time. Now I know I made that look pretty easy, but remember I've practiced a lot to get this approach down. So if you're not getting it right away, don't sweat it. Just keep practicing small chunks of the strategy until you can master the whole thing. And don't be afraid to reload from your last save to practice without wasting resources. Also, remember that I wasn't using the best possible gear here. If you have fully upgraded legendary gear, you can literally take down the slaughter spine in a single sustained burst, and you don't even have to rope it down or target the plasma core. But even without the best gear, as you get more comfortable, you'll be able to skip some of the steps like knocking it down with drill spikes or even skipping the tie down steps altogether. Now, before we check out the apex, I want to give you guys some alternative strategies in case this one doesn't really fit your playstyle or if you want something a little more advanced. First, if you don't like getting up close with the bolt blaster, then you can certainly use it from range. You won't be able to deal as much damage without being able to hit the plasma core, but you can focus on the spine launchers for a pretty good boost. Spread Blast can also be a good weapon technique to use on the Bolt Blaster, especially if you like to coil yours with critical hit chance or damage coils, but you won't be able to target the Plasma Core very effectively with this either. If you don't like the Bolt Blaster, then you could use a Sharp Shot Bow to land powerful shots on the Plasma Core. In that case, I'd recommend using the Power Shot's Valor Surge to boost your damage as much as possible. Another option is to use a Spike Thrower. Explosive Spikes can either be used as single spikes with Power Shots or the Splitting Spike weapon technique to boost their damage, depending on which one you like more. In either case, you'll again want to target the spine launchers. Drill spikes can be a lot of fun because you just need to land them and they'll do most of the work for you, dealing a bunch of damage over time, especially to a frozen machine and when coiled with damage over time coils. You can also use them with the Power Shots Valor Surge to boost their damage even further. It can be tough to land spikes right on the plasma core, but even if you miss and just hit the body, drill spikes on frozen machines will deal a ton of damage. Of course, we're already doing this a bit when we use the drill spikes for knockdown. For you Warrior Bow fans, the spread shot weapon technique can certainly be a great way to dish out lots of damage on the frozen slaughter spine, but you'll need a high level warrior bow like the Karja's Bane for this to be effective. That being said, warrior bow ammo is very resource efficient, so this can be good if you want to conserve materials. And finally, a shredder gauntlet can also be a very resource efficient way to deal damage to the frozen slaughter spine. If you're a shredder enthusiast like me, then you might actually just use shock shredders for the entire fight. This isn't the fastest method, but it's very resource efficient and a lot of fun. I'll link my shredder gauntlet masterclass video down below in case you're interested in how that works. Okay, now let's come up with a strategy for the Apex Slaughter Spine. Other than the obvious increases in health and attack strength, the biggest difference with an Apex is the fact that it's resistant to frost instead of weak to it. If you watched my elemental damage video, then you know that purge water can be used to remove elemental resistances, but the Apex is resistant to purge water as well, so it won't be easy to drench it directly. Fortunately, it has a purge water sack on each arm, so all we need to do is explode one to trigger the drench state. It can be difficult to hit these while the Slaughter Spine is moving around, so I suggest your first step is either to tie it down with ropes or trigger a knockdown using drill spikes. I like to start by hiding in tall grass and stealthily landing a few drill spikes on one of the legs. After a few seconds, the slaughter spine will fall over. Moving quickly, we can easily land a few explosive spikes near our purge water sack to blow it up and trigger the drench state. Now, with the slaughter spine drenched, we can freeze it much more easily and use the same strategy as the regular variant. Tie it down, freeze it, and then do a range master boosted sustain burst on the plasma core. Again, knocking it down with drill spikes after the first sustain burst can make it easier to target the other purge water sack. By the way, purge water will disable all of the slaughter spine's plasma attacks on either variant. So if you're having trouble with those, you could use purge water arrows or bombs to drench the slaughter spine in between freezing it to prevent it from using plasma attacks on you. Now, if you've got fully upgraded legendary gear, you can take the slaughter spine down much faster. All you need to do is freeze it straight away with your sun scourge and then use a range master boosted sustain burst on it. You don't even need to bother with the tie down or knockdown steps if you're using long range damage coils on your bolt blaster and keep your distance. The apex will take two rounds of sustained burst, but you can still take it down super fast. 
fast. This is the quickest and least resource intensive way I found to farm Apex Slaughter Spine Hearts. If you want to do this, I recommend triggering Range Master as the very first step, even before freezing the Slaughter Spine so you have the maximum amount of time for your sustained bursts. Alright guys, that's my Master Machine Hunting Guide for Slaughter Spines. Like I said at the start, Slaughter Spines can easily be considered the toughest machine in Forbidden West, and I know a lot of people struggle with them, so I hope this video helped you out. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, leaving a like would be much appreciated and really does help. I'd also love to hear what you guys think are the best ways to deal with Slaughter Spines, so leave me a comment about that down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.